Hello and welcome to the first lab update straight from the north of Sweden or middle of Sweden. I'm shooting this one outside just to show you why we're here. I think this is what winter should look like. The colors of winter should be white and not brown, black and gray. But let's go inside anyway. So there's uh, three projects I've taken to Sweden to work on. First one is some software for the zombie verter. Second one, that's what we're going to talk about today, is the flying ADC BMS. And third one is somewhere buried in this box. It's perhaps uh, revisiting the adapter board for the Gen 3 Nissan inverter. Okay, I'm hoping this is shooting in focus. This is a newer revision board than last time with uh, various glitches fixed. And uh, but it will be there will be another design once again, and that's why we're going to look at this rather worked on board. Um, as you might be able to see, I have removed uh, this chip here and here, and I could also remove the last one here. So all the let's call it primary side logic is going to be replaced um, by a host processor. So the new design. Um, is going to have just one board. There won't be some any master slave or what's a new term main sub configuration on this one, but there will just be this board and uh, one one of the boards will play the role of the main controller. Yes, and they will all have uh, a host processor. No surprise here, STM32 F103, 48 pin configuration. And that's going to talk to the MUX, talk to the LEC, and do various um, BMS functionality. And also I've decided to do away with these RJ45 connectors and just replace them with a, um, what are they called, T T E, yeah, whatever, um, screw, screw type uh, connectors. Mm, we will take a look at that in a second on the screen, because it's not yet been manufactured. So yes, you can really see I'm giving the analog discovery a good shakedown here. Pretty much all its uh, functional units are being used to monitor various uh, signals, and we're using an old inverter board to um, as a host processor right now, because there's none on the actual board. Um, the wiring that's, that runs from the processor board to the BMS board is just SPI buses. And we're going to take a closer look at what's happening there now. So I've written a quick and dirty software to run this. And uh, yeah, here's what it does. Uh, let's look at the input stimulus first. I'm using the wave gen generator to just uh, generate some simple DC voltages. So first simulate battery voltage is 2.5 volt, the other one is uh, 4 volt. And because we're only measuring the difference, uh, so the, the second one will be 1.5 volts, 4 minus 2.5. And then <clears throat> we're generating a third voltage, we're limited to 5 volts here, so uh, 5 volts. So a differential voltage of 1 volt, and then I'm using my lab supply that's behind the camera uh, to generate another 9 volt, so a 4 volt difference to those 5 volts here. And yeah, that's what we are pretty much seeing on the four channels right here um, being displayed. I can also set the I squared C out, that is uh, the balancing uh, controller. So if I set this to 15, it's going to uh, balance the voltages via a 100 ohm resistor and we should just see a drop in voltage. Here we go, they all drop. And if we were to look at the power supply, we can see some current being drawn whenever channel 4 is being switched on. Good, let's get rid of that and let's see um, at how this thing is running. So, here we got our logic analyzer and we, we can see the MUX switching. 
Let's make this a bit larger. So you can see the first nibble running from 0 to 3 uh, cyclically. And then here we see the read commands uh, to the ADC. And we see the ADC responding with various values. And if we single shot capture that, um, you can see <coughs> first we are writing a clear max command, uh, AD. And that switches off all output transistors, so we're having a bit of dead time. The classic thing to, um, to avoid shoot through between turning off one transistor and turning on the next one. And then we're outputting um, AC2, so in this case we're switching on channel 2, 0 base, or channel 3, 1 base. And the C, I've changed uh, the output wiring of the shift register, so we need to uh, output the 6 bit to 1 to actually enable any channel at all. Um, I might show you that in the schematic later on. Yeah, so that's what we see. Uh, let's put a cursor in here. First we are outputting the MUX. Oh, why is it jo jumping? Oh, whatever. We are putting the MUX uh, configuration. Then we are reading the ADC. That gives us the value from the last max max value. And then we're starting the ADC again to read the next value. If you look at the scope here, let's run that. Um, we can see the, the positive and negative swing happening. So, uh, yeah, presumably this is, uh, let's get a cursor in here. This is channel. Zero being switched in, the 2.5 volts. Uh, then we're switching in the 1.5 volts, and this is negative because of how the, the MUX works. <clears throat> then we're switching in the 5 volts, or 1 volt difference, right here. And then here we're switching in the minus 4 volts, or from the lab power supply. So this is um, all working quite well with 4 channels. Um, I would have liked to actually test this with 16 channels to see uh, it actually works on high voltage and on actual lithium cells. Um, <clears throat> I've connected one lithium cell from one of my cameras here to test the, the balancing. So we, we can actually feed current into the cell from the DC-DC converter. So that's all working. Current was pretty low, like 20 milliamps. So the next um, revision will have the resistors changed a bit to run more current into the cell. Okay, down here you can see uh, an extra SPI bus and that's because we are not actually running the I2C uh, communication via the I2C peripheral in the processor. For one, it's quite buggy, but that's not the actual reason. Uh, the reason is that we are running isolated I2C. So as opposed to normal I2C where we have one line for data going both ways, now we have one line for data going to the ADC and one line coming back. So the stock peripheral cannot deal with that. So that's why we are running I2C over SPI. Um, and that's a bit ugly to be honest. Um, and this is the SPI data that we clock out in order to, to speak uh, I2C. Mm, so to, to generate our uh, read command. This is actually being bit banked. I couldn't get the SPI peripheral to, to do that for me. Uh, we are putting a D1. And yeah, then we are putting all uh, in this line, we are outputting all ones to give the ADC the possibility to return its own data. You can see the return data up here. Yeah. And that's what it looks like on the SPI bus um, because of the acknowledged bit that is being generated after every byte we receive. Uh, the data has to be shifted around a bit uh, because, uh, yeah, to recover the actual data that the ADC has sent. Yeah, like I said, it's a bit ugly, but once it's hidden away in the code, you can just forget about it and run it like that. Good, let's take a look at the schematic. Uh, yeah, so this is the new primary site with all the um, 74 series logic eliminated. And we're running at just a small STM processor that's connected to the, to the ADC here. And that's connected to the MUX here, via a different SPI bus. 
And um, yeah, then it's got a CAN transceiver, so the modules are going to be inter interconnected with CAN and communicate via that. Here we have a bit of custom enable logic, so um, we can leave the PMS permanently connected to 12 volts and then can be enabled with the ignition signal or uh, the processor can choose to, to keep itself running even without ignition for some time to do whatever. Can do balancing, for example, even while the car is uh, turned off. And then when it chooses uh, that it's done, it will just drop its own enable line and kind of kill its own power supply. Yes, that is the new primary side. Uh, let's took, uh, take a look at the MUX control. I've slightly modified that. Mm, so here we see a new MOSFET. And that MOSFET resets the internal shift register um, <clears throat> every time we have put in a value. Because otherwise, when we put in the next word, we will um, shift the old word through and then get various glitches on the on the output register. And that could have resulted in, I don't know, maybe uh, destroying the mux or... Anyway, it didn't look very clean, so I'm having some clean uh, reset circuitry in there now to, uh, to avoid that. Um, yeah, otherwise I think it's all unchanged. <coughs> oh, here yeah, I've added a lid. So, um, yeah, here yeah, that's what I said about bit 6 needs to be set to uh, actually enable the MUX. That's uh, this new line right here. So when the MUX is enabled, we are also getting this LED to light up. Yeah, in the future I'm trying to eliminate this DC-DC converter because the circuit just takes like 5 milliamps to run and yeah, maybe there's ways to kind of bleed over voltage from the ADC-DC-DC converter in some way. But for now we will just keep it to simplify stuff. Um, yeah, on the ADC side not much has changed. Uh, yeah, I've added a capacitor at the ADC input. Added some annotation to how what what words to put out to the to this uh, uh, output driver here. And then here I've added some resistors on the low side, so the current from the DC DC converter actually runs through less resistance than if we are pleading current from the cells. Yeah, so pleading current uh, is achieved by switching both low side transistors on and then we will plead current via these two 22 ohm resistors from the currently connected cell. Good, let's take a look at uh, the fancy 3D rendering. So the communication is going to be handled, or communication and power supply is going to be handled by this connector right here. Um, yeah, so you screw into a, into a screw clamp and then simply plug this in to this connector here. Then here we have a new connector that is being used for temperature probes and uh, current sensing. And then here we have some programming headers, not too interesting. Mm, and I've changed the battery input uh, header to 170 po 17 pole, uh, what's called Molex connector. So it's not being 3D rendered, it's basically the same type of connector like this one, just with more pins. Right. Um, so that's the current state of affairs with the flying ADC BMS. I might only order it once I'm back in Germany uh, because I want to do some high voltage tests on the current uh, hardware to see that's actually glitch free and uh, to see, maybe I have to make some changes to the board still. And then I will send it off for manufacture. So I hope you found this little update interesting. Thanks very much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.